many, many vinyl collectors have had the privilege of finding most of the rare records that they've been looking for, either through reissues or just the thrill of the hunt. But all of us, I don't care who you are, you have records that are still on your wish list. I'm going to cover a couple of mine coming up right now. So I've mentioned many times on the channel before that uh, for as long as I've been collecting, I was fortunate enough to get in on a lot of my uh, whatever you want to call them, wish list records, want records, holy grails, uh, through collecting years ago before really the big huge vinyl boom uh, happened. And uh, there's always a couple other records that are on my list that I'm just like, oh, I should have bought that before before now, either because of the vinyl boom or uh, an artist passed away or something becomes you know even more legendary, a, a spike in popularity for whatever reason. Uh, I do have stuff on my wish list that I'm always thinking, oh, I should have bought that before now, before it skyrocketed. Uh, this is not by any means a complete list of what's on my wish list. Uh, I just thought of doing a video like this and thought uh, the, really the first five things that came to mind. So I guess I, you would say that these are probably the ones that I want the most. Um, but the first one <clears throat> is really kind of a strange one, I guess. Uh, it, not really strange, but it's just one of those ones that you wouldn't think is so rare. Uh, and it's an album that I want for more than a few reasons. And that is the first Firehouse album, the self-titled album. Uh, there has been a lot of reissues over the past two years specifically of a lot of that late 80s, early 90s rock. I, I don't like the term, but hair metal, that type of thing. And for whatever reason, their first record has had it has never had a reissue that I'm aware of, and uh, it's just skyrocketed in price to find an original pressing of it. And there's cuts like uh, Love of a Lifetime, Don't Treat Me Bad, that everybody knows, but there's one song in particular on there called Shake and Tumble that is just the jam. I don't even think it was a single. And I just love that song so much <laughs> that I want to get that uh, record and I can't find it anywhere. It's just, I, uh, or I can find it. I can go on Discogs or eBay, but the, the original pressings are outrageous. Uh, so that's one that's still on my wish list. Uh, another one is a 7-inch record that is, again, one of those things that uh, every time it crosses my mind, I think, oh, I should have bought that before now. And uh, one is uh, That Thing You Do, the 45-inch single for That Thing You Do by The Wonders or The Oneaters, depending on uh, how early you got in to them in your in their career they are uh i just love that song i love that movie and uh i have paid up to i think 30 or 40 bucks for a uh, a seven inch record in the past uh but every time i look at this guys it just that one keeps going up higher and higher um or you know they're available uh, from a seller that might not have a reputable, uh, a good reputation yet on Discogs or, uh, you know, be coming from another country where shipping's outrageous. So for whatever reason, uh, I just, every time I think that thought crosses my mind that I'd really like to get the seven inch for that thing you do, it's either uh, too expensive or uh, too far away for me to really do anything about. So that's definitely on my wish list still. Uh, another one that I guess could fall into the uh, hair metal category, the late 80s, early 90s, and actually this one comes from the mid 90s, is uh, Skid Row's third studio album, Subhuman Race. Very, very, very divisive record in the community uh, of Skid Row fans. Uh, most Skid Row fans, to my knowledge, do not like the album at all. Uh, I like it enough to where I, I would like to get a copy of it. Um, I was able to find an original pressing of their first album years ago. Um, I have an original pressing of Slave to the Grind and the Record Store Day reissue of it. And there's a video on the channel uh, of those if you have any interest in checking that out. And uh, Subhuman Race is one of those albums that, again, I love the first two so much more, and I don't dislike Subhuman Race at all, but I love the first two so much more that uh, for years I was just like, oh, I'll get to it, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. And the whole time I was just thinking, uh, well, it's not like that record's going to skyrocket in price. You know, even Skid Row fans don't like it all that much. Uh, but because of rarity, it's extremely hard to find for a reasonable price, and it's one of those albums... I really don't think is going to get a reissue anytime soon. Like, I would be very surprised if the third Skid Row album uh, got a reissue. Outside of the record store day one, we can't even get a, a regular reissue of Slave to the Grind so far. So, uh, for me, that's, that's a big one. These next two are ones that... Uh, 
I definitely are, are, I said this wasn't like a top five or top 10 video, but these two are two of my most wanted. Uh, and the first one that I'm going to cover is actually a bootleg or a, a, a counterfeit, whatever you want to call it. It's not an official release. I would love to find a really good, uh, quiet copy of uh, Pink Floyd Live in Oakland, 77. And, uh, for a reasonable price pretty much every time i've ever seen it for sale uh in even if the seller listed in in decent condition or above uh it's a, just a little out of my price range and uh for pink floyd fans that tour is a fantastic uh tour for for many different reasons and if you're a pink floyd fan and you're familiar with the animals tour you might be watching this video being like really not why not montreal um I like the Montreal show. I totally get its uh, historic context in, in the history of Pink Floyd and why that show is special. Uh, but for me, the band sounded much better in Oakland of the, on the overall show. And uh, in addition to doing the usual encore of Money and Us and Them, uh, which I think is Us and Them, then Money. But anyways, they closed the whole show with the final performance of Careful With That Axe Eugene ever. And Careful With That Axe Eugene is one of my favorite Pink Floyd songs. Uh, if not my favorite, uh, I think it changes daily. Uh, but that version is fantastic. That is that caps off that show. Uh, so Pink Floyd live in Oakland, '77. Even though it's not an officially uh, released record, that is easy. Like I, if I saw one today for a decent price, I would pick it up. Number one for me on my wish list, hands down, beyond the shadow of a doubt, is the fifth Black Crow's studio album, "By Your Side." I again, now this is. You know, I realize that I'm fortunate in this. I have been fortunate to gather everything that I'm aware of that's available on vinyl from the Black Crows. I have uh, Freak and Roll, uh, Lions, you know, pretty much all the other uh, rare stuff that I can think of. And I actually have a lot of Black Crows related videos on the channel. So uh, if your ears perked up, you heard the Black Crows and, and you like the Crows, I have a lot of Crows related stuff on the channel. So go back and take a look. Um, but for whatever reason, I have never got around to finding their fifth studio album by your side and it's such a bummer for me because it's the only one that I'm missing from their uh, studio works and I, well that I'm aware of it's the only Black Crows release I'm missing on vinyl and uh, I love the album it's a great album too I even own uh, War Paint on vinyl and I don't even like that album that much it's my least favorite Black Crows record at least or second least um, and the thing with by your side is it's even been bootlegged like there was a well circulated counterfeit slash bootleg a couple of years ago i think it was on blue vinyl and i even missed out on that <laughs> i don't know if i thought the black crows were gonna uh, reissue it uh so i would just wait or what and i really do hope that it gets a reissue because the original pressings just go for uh let me put it this way i like the black crows and i love by your side but i don't like and love them that much uh it's it's, it's a little bit outrageous what they go for so for me, that's easy, my number one uh, album on my want list. And there are others, you know, we're never going to own everything that we want to own, right? I don't think so. Uh, but I, those are some that I have on my wish list. Again, like I said at the beginning of the video, if you're watching this, you have a wish list. You have a want list. There's records on that grail list that you want. So, uh, like I say, I always... Thanks for subscribing if you have. I love it when we get the likes on the channel. But what matters more to me than anything is the discussion. And that's what I'd like to have uh, in here. I would love to hear from you about what you, uh, what are the records that you're still looking for? Uh, what are some of the reasons that you haven't got them? Because with our connected society, uh, you like for me, I could go on Discogs and find a lot of these records. I just don't want to for uh, what shipping might cost or what the record might cost. So leave a comment. Let me know what your uh, big want record list are what's still on your wish list and uh, how or why you haven't been able to get it yet. Thanks so much for watching.